Welcome to Sculpture Studios, a cheeky project here from the Resurrection Vault, particularly for you maiden troopers out there, creating something special for the band mascot, Eddie the Head. Now, Eddie's been seen on stage numerous times over the years, either as a costumed character, interacting alongside the band, or as a spectacle of a sculpture at the back of the performance space. Some of these larger pieces that you can see here, we've actually created ourselves, so be sure to check out the links in the YouTube description to see what else we've made for Iron Maiden. For this project, which up to now has been lying dormant, waiting for an up-to-date video to be made, we've dug out some old footage to show the creation of an oversized guitar created for their on-stage character. Contacted by Hangman, who we've been commissioned by in the past, we've been sent the concept images for Eddie's personalised instrument. This is going to be larger than life and purely sculptural, as I highly doubt Eddie's actually going to be playing anything anytime soon. Aiden's beginning the sculpt using polystyrene, this is ideal, as it's lightweight, and this allows him to lift and freely handle the job, and he can create the shape and form relatively quickly. Once this has been confirmed with the client, clay is worked on top to create the detail. This will obviously need to be strong and durable to be handled at god knows how many concerts, so glass fibre is going to be needed. We're going to create a mould and a cast of this for both a higher standard of finish and to preserve all the detail, rather than putting a blanket coat of fiberglass on top. At this point in time, the band only require one guitar, so we're creating what's known as a waste plaster mould. This means you'll only really get one cast from it, as the plaster of Paris is only strong enough for one cast pull. We've created a dividing wall around the perimeter of the guitar, and this allows the mould to split into two pieces. Starting with a more watery layer of plaster to achieve all of the detail, we gradually build up in a few thicker layers on top. Once this process is repeated on the other side, the plaster is then left to dry out properly over the next couple of days. Leaving it to dry like this helps reduce the risk of the plaster cracking through being too damp and too soft. Once the plaster is set and has been taken apart, the interior master pattern is removed. Cleaning up the inside of the mould helps improve the finish later on, and will save on the need to heavier sand tougher materials further into the process. Here we're going in with Coca-Cola. I'm joking, it's definitely not Coca-Cola, it's a shellac. And this shellac seals the plaster, and acts as a barrier and a sort of release agent for the resin and glass fibre. We give this a layer of PVA blue once the shellac is dry, just to help ensure that the cast comes out without any problems. Coca-Cola. I bet somebody bought that. Oh, I should have said Iron Brew. That would have been better. Going in with a few layers of resin gel coat provides a thick, smooth layer for each half of the cast. This means that any sanding and cleaning up later will be through a thick gel coat surface before sanding down too easily to the bare fiberglass underneath. Once the casts have been laid up and extracted from the mould, the edges are cleaned up and the two halves laminated together. The surface is then treated with car body fillers where needed, and sanded back, and a grey primer just helps show up any imperfections. Here we have the guitar for Iron Maiden, for Eddie to hold. He holds it like that. But yeah, it's quite nice, from the back. The artwork you see here has been airbrushed by Paul Carslake, and a gloss lacquer applied on top. Don't worry, we're not going to skip the artwork phase, as the project has needed an amendment of sorts. The waste plaster mould helped to keep the cost down for the client, with only one guitar needed at the time, but now we're going to have to go down another route. We turn back the Eddie guitar, um, the person who's performing as the giant Eddie comes on stage, said it's a little bit too heavy and he wants it reduced by, uh, well at the moment it's one half times the scale and it's um, it's seven and a half kilos heaviness with the, including the belt buckle. But they want it reduced to about four and a half kilos so we can just throw it around the stage. That's what they're after. So what I'm doing is now making a fresh mold of this and then I'm going to repeat it, making a very thin layup and then I have to repaint it identical but adding a little more claret to the um, claret and blue as it's, it's fading to a little bit pink there. And the, um, one of the band members said, can I would just a, a touch more claret? After all it is for them, so um, I'll do what they request and it should be a lot lighter and I just hope I don't damage this one in the process and I'll show you a bit later on the finished one. 
A fiberglass mould was taken this time, both to ensure that we actually have a mould in case they wanted more guitars further down the line, and in order to get the original guitar out of the mould. We need to pop this out in one piece, as we no longer have a breakable polystyrene master pattern like the beginning of the project, and this requires the mould to have a bit of flex. A fiberglass mould has this flexibility, whereas a plaster of Paris mould doesn't. We need to be careful when removing the guitar, as to preserve the original artwork, in order for Aidan to replicate the airbrush finish himself. Here I am now just putting the finishing touches on the Eddie guitar. As you know from earlier, I've made a half weight version of the original, and I'll just show you. Put an eddy on the back of it, as before. So it's an exact copy, really. And on the front of it, it's nice and light. It's nothing at all, really. I think the maximum weight here is about four kilos now. And um, now I've done the airbrushing. I'm going to add some little highlights of white, um, sprinkle some some like, glitter like within the surface layer of the, of the lacquer, and that would just give it a nice little twinkle as well. So, yeah, it's looking quite nice. Just a few little finishing touches to do just to bring it to life, and then we'll fix the wires on. Yeah, it's quite a faithful copy, I think, all round, and I think they'll be pleased with it. Creating pieces like this for bands like Iron Maiden, and effectively a theatre piece, it always feels like a double rewarding project. Not only is this an interesting job to take on in the first place, but it's also a chance to contribute something unique for a theatrically thrilling performance seen by millions all over the world. We always know we have to up the irons for each project we take on with them, and we'll always look forward to potential sculpting opportunities with Maiden in the future. Please feel free to leave any comments below, as they're always appreciated, and hit the subscribe button for our latest videos. You can like Sculpture Studios on Facebook, and follow at Aidan Hines on Twitter, and for more of our work, visit sculpturestudios.co.uk. Thank you very much for watching.